Hello to you once again. This is yet another problem, and it's yet again from 1817, where White's task is to deliver checkmate with a specific piece of pawn. The task here is White to checkmate in 10 moves with this pawn, not to promote it and then deliver checkmate, but actually just with the pawn. And also, White must not capture Black's pawn in order to do that. So, can you see the sort of idea that White has in mind here? Well, it's a double idea, really. The first part of it, yeah, this is the key move, and the idea behind this is to stop Black's king getting to c8. So we're stopping him from moving any further. He goes back and forth between a8 and b8. That's part one. Part two, really, is to eventually sacrifice something on b6 to force his pawn to take, because eventually Black is going to run out of moves with his king, otherwise he'd be in stalemate. So we need to keep that in mind. So the response is to here. That's one move. How does white construct this mating net then in a further nine moves? Well, he could do it either by a3 or d2. It doesn't really make any difference. Just play it to there, and black has to go back. And then white comes here on his third move. Just take a look at that. So black continues to move back and forth. He's no choice in the matter. So now we play here. And what we're doing is we're overprotecting c8, and there is a good reason for that. Black must go back. That is after four king a8. So how does white continue? Well, in keeping with what I said earlier, he doesn't want to sacrifice something on b6, so he plays bishop e3. Black plays five king b8. What now? This is the critical stage. If you're going to solve this, you need to get white's sixth move absolutely spot on. And you need to understand why you're playing it there. Well, what we want to do really, if we could have this guy on b7, we would be able to inflict checkmate much sooner. Now, if that bishop were on b7, black would be in stalemate. If it were his move, but it would be white's. And then you go ahead and sacrifice. So yes, we play bishop c8, and that's why you needed the knight on d6 to overprotect c8. So what does he have there? Well, he only has his back and forth, doesn't he? So it's king a8. So what do we do now? Do we sacrifice on b6 yet? No, we play this like I suggested. We check him there. That's seven, bishop b7 check. So he plays king b8. And now he's in stalemate. So we unstalemate him? Yes, by eight, bishop b6. That's exactly right. He only has one move there. It's to take this bishop. And so what do we do in that position? How do we get around the problem that black has a flight square there? Well, the knight came to the bishop's assistance, covering c8. Now the bishop comes to the knight's assistance, covering c8. And that knight, of course, also covers a7. So what does black have there? Well, now you see, we freed him up. He's captured, which is perfectly all right. We've not taken the pawn. He can now play this. And so now, the 10th move? Yes. Wango. A7. Checkmate. And that is a, a lovely problem. And it's been my pleasure to present it to you. And goodbye for now.